Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Join me today as I paint this lovely picture of the Oyster House in Faversham Creek in Kent. Let's roll that intro, let's see what happens. Hi everybody, welcome back. Now, as I said at the start, I'm actually going to be painting this wonderful picture of the Oyster House that's located in Faversham Creek in Kent. It's a really iconic building on the edge of the river where a lot of the old Thames barges used to come and empty and load up or unload their wares, as it were, plying their trade up and down the east coast of England back in the day. Now, I'm going to be using... Uh, ink and wash as a technique now it's really really hot in here tonight and you can see from my face just how hot it is and that also caused me one or two problems when it comes to doing the washes on this painting now you'll see those uh, in all their glory warts and all and I'm not hiding anything from you so you'll see them you'll see how I got out of them and how you can correct those mistakes and one more thing this this is what we're actually going to be drawing with. We're going to be using some uh, Diatramentus ink, which is located in this little cup. And we're going to be using a cherry stick that I've grabbed from the garden, sharpened it up into a makeshift quill uh, or pen nib. And that's what we're going to be using to do tonight's um, ink and wash. And we're not actually using any pencil to start it off anyway. Now, as always, the reference for this will be over on my Patreon for you to download freely. You don't need to be a patron to do that. But download it and have a go at this one yourself. And if you've access to a few sticks in the garden, then just sharpen one up with a sharp blade and have a go at this. It's a whole heap of fun. And it does make for total irregularity with your mark making and does create some wonderful gestural, gestural marks so it's well worth having a play with that idea instead of having the regular type of pens that you can always get a hold of and give you that absolute spot on mark whatever lie you, cr you try and make so anyway before I go rabbiting on forever let's get into this and let's see exactly how it happened catch you soon Okay, everybody, let's get underway and let's see how this turns out. It is, as I said at the start, quite a bit of an experiment. There are several reasons for that. One, I am using a just a piece of old stick from the garden that I've sharpened up into a makeshift pen. And I used to do this many, many years ago. In fact, for so many years that I care to remember, I used to carry around a sharpened bamboo. And uh, this is just... A similar sort of thing now there are many people out there already doing things like this so it's nothing new but the idea with using a piece of stick that you've sharpened is that you can like get you a couple of others out that you can make different nibs you can make different ends this one hasn't been used yet but you can see how blunt that end is on that one from very sharp to very blunt and you have options because when you have a prescribed pen when you use something with a fixed nib, say half an inch or half a millimeter nib, it will deliver the same line from there to there or anywhere on this paper. There is no room for error. There is no variation to such or to a degree. So the idea with this one is to have a little bit of fun with the ink. And I'm already very dirty, as you can see. And I haven't even started. But never mind. Now let me just talk you through this. Now these are fairly inexpensive uh, oil painters, medium bowls that you can put spirit in or you can put linseed oil in and seal them up. Now they're not very expensive, but you've got to be aware. I bought two pack, two of these, and one of them has filed. It leaks and it's got to go back as a result of that. But what I've done is, and this is not my idea at all. I actually got this off of another YouTuber recently whereby they soak the ink. Now I've got a little bit too much ink in there to be fair, but they soak their ink in some limp gauze, not limp gauze, uh, just gauze. And you just dip the pen into that and it stops the ink from splaying all over you. So it's not a bad idea. And with this drawing, now this is the well-known Oyster Bay house in Faversham Creek. 
uh, in Kent and it's uh, resident to many many boats as you can see in the photograph and I've painted this several times I've actually done an ink and wash of this in the past but what I'm trying to do and I have no idea this is going to work <laughs> Trust me, this is totally an experiment. But I'm not going to go in with the drawing, with the pencil. I'm just going to go in with the ink and just see what happens. And I'm sort of looking at the back and I'm just going to put a tap down and just make a start. Okay, making a few changes in the decisions that I'm making. And sort of, let's come back with the side of the world house, wheelhouse there, the top there, and we've got the roof. And we've got some negative spaces of the window. So we want to try, if we can, and leave, I think there are more than enough there just leaving a little bit of light or white paper around what are darkened window areas that are displayed you know the inside of the vessel down through here this is the return of the building now I'm going to try if I can there's the back end of the mast of this Thames barge which is sitting down in the water so I've got to think about the level of the water through here it's actually just in the water just probably on the mud more than the water but let's just put it in there there's the stern okay and we've got these sort of dark parts of the stern so you've got a very sort of the actual stern plate there is quite a lovely shape and then you've got the um, tiller or the rudder on the back What I want to do now is I want to sort of suggest these boats, little taps, little dashes, little dots, almost 
uh, nothing at all. But hopefully, I do enough of them, they will start to suggest vessels. But this little dab and dot, this little unbroken uh, suggestion of marks, suddenly help you build a vessel. You see, I've put that little curve in there. Already it suggests that we've got a bit of a cabin on this one moving forward. Behind this one, we can do the same on this one. Just building little bits of information as we go along the river. Now, through the back here, there is all sorts of things happening. I think what we've got here is an awful lot of boatyard stuff in the background here. So bring that mast down on this one. We do have a vessel, a large yacht. In fact, we have several up through here. So there's a large yacht through there. There we go. So that's quite a complex little story that we've told. And we haven't finished yet. We've still got to come back into what we've been doing. I mainly went up the river as such because I wanted to allow all of this area to dry. And when you are working sort of in this fashion, it really does pay to take a little care and make sure that areas are dry before you work over them. The last thing you really want to do is to come back in and realize that your hands have sort of just picked some ink up and just spread it in places you just did not want it. And just sort of sketchy scratching in the center. It's like a recess windows. I don't know if they've been transformed to make these offices, but there is sort of a recess in the building here. We've got a lovely sort of shadow coming, cast shadow down there. Lots of darks in here. We're going to actually add to those, but we're going to use the paint to do that, I think. is a bit of three-dimensional is the reveals of the windows and if you've got something wildly out then's the chance to just change what you see to reflect what you need to be all right so what we've got here is we've got some little bits of reflections of our vessels I'm going to start with 
this one we've got that significant dark in there i've deliberately left a little bit of light in there to put a little section of um brown that lovely red brown of the sails i'm going to put in the back there and then we've got this sort of ripply shape and i'm going to suggest that by wiggly lines coming down we've got that really dark shape like that And make sure that they are sort of coming down underneath the object but they should actually be pointing to me a little bit because i am seeing them from my source my position i'm just going to run that through there i think that's pretty much it a few darker marks just to create some eddies in the water maybe checking back up here we've got quite a bit of dark here on our vessel and it is quite dark under its waterline there, it's coming up to the back, so we need to put that in. Okay, so now let's get on and let's start looking at the color. I did use the spray bottle on all my colors about 20, 25 minutes ago, just to set them up. And so they are sort of activated and ready to release pigment more easily. Got two brushes. That's all I'm gonna predominantly use tonight, I think, is a larger round and a smaller round. I happen to have them handy and um, First and foremost, then what are we going to go? We're going to go in with the sky. Now, what I want to do with this, I just want to slightly wet a bit of dirt on my brush, slightly wet this sky as it comes down, but not all over. Just checking that ink is still dry. Hopefully, it is. I'm going to add in a little bit of raw sienna to my sky. struggling a little bit it's so hot in here tonight we are experiencing a yet another heat wave um, and so it's causing quite a bit of an issue with the drying time so I'm going to come around I'm going to leave that around some of the shapes here and take that off to the edge but it's going to cause me I can see there are drying lines already causing me an issue and not a lot I can do about that I have to live with that, I think. And if I go back in, I know I'm going to regret this. Um, <laughs> I can't. I'm procrastinating, and it's going to cost me if I do that. So I am going to go back in, put a stronger color in through there, turn this upside down very, very quickly, and use some blue. And I'm just going to backwash this all the way out to the top. So by re-wetting this area, Ideally, in the argument, should be 
that I should have used a bigger brush and mixed more color up before I got started. So it's very fundamental error on my part. down let's just see how that affects certainly got a dramatic sky that's for sure <laughs> it might make for an interesting painting at the end of the day but um, it is quite dramatic now you could and I'm tempted to just tap in a little bit of clean towel just to this could be another mistake you know when you get so far with something you wish you'd left it alone I'm really experiencing that right now. Okay, when all else fails, I'm getting to that point where I'm sort of looking a little bit gloomier at this whole thing. What I'm going to do is spritz or elf, as people call it, or in my way, I call it just spraying out the problem, getting rid of it using a damp towel just to clean off. Let this dry out. Once it's dry, then we have another second go at it. Just let it dry out. Take any excess water away. As long as you're losing, using a clean towel, you should be fine with this. And actually, as a sky, I'm not unhappy with that. It, um, yeah, maybe that was the answer all the way was to literally make a big mess and then try and tidy it up with a little bit of a spray bottle action. But it, it, I think we've got away with that. I'm thinking that I want to put in a little bit of blue and um, while it's still fairly damp, I think I'm just going to suggest the odd bit of blue sky into some of these clouds and hopefully we may have made a bit of a recovery. gonna be glad we got it back to there I really am I'm gonna let this dry before I do any more and while I'm waiting for it to dry I'm just going to come in with some greens now my greens I'm gonna be using some thalo green and I'm gonna to add to that some yellow ochre tonight add those two together and see where we are with the green now if you're not sure then please always take a little odd piece of paper with you and just tap it on and just see how green that green is. It's a little bit too, um, how we should I say, a little bit too greeny green. And that may be a little fresher green. And I'm going to go with that one. So all I'm going to do in 
this case is just put in a suggestion. I'm going to come back in with a bit more ink further on, but I just wanted to put in a suggestion of this shoreline. It's out of harm's way where that's concerned, so I'm not really worried about that. And what I will do in a minute is come back in when we come to do in the trees here. I'm just lifting off a little bit of that stronger color around where some of these trees will need to go. And I'm gonna come back in with an overall color value, which is quite warm. So I'm gonna use some burnt sienna on the side of our oyster house, but I'm gonna put in just a little smidge of our blue colors we've been using. I want to come in here, I want this sort of color for, I'm gonna leave a little suggestion of the color for that sign. And of course this one is almost pure white around there. This lovely blue color a little stronger and I'm using my Payne's gray it gets a little bit rustier and redder down through this part of the vessel so that little drop in of color will help uh, convey that feeling of that rust in there let those two colors just work together and they will granulate a bit but that's absolutely fine so continuing to work on this side gonna come in with a little bit of ochre and I just want to put in a base color to our wall of our, our harbor wall, as it were, or the wharf, or whatever you want to call that. So as we come down for our water, I'm going to look at that color again. I'm going to use a little bit of blue. I don't want to put too much in. I see a bit contaminated. Let's come in bit more blue in there and just see where we are with that very very weak solution that's all I want from this and make a lovely phthalo blue color tap of cobalt into that too fairly strong don't need too much of it but fairly strong colors because i want to put in looking at where my boats are and just and my yachts and i just want to put in the odd sort of shape suggesting a little bit of blue in here from one of those tenders there lovely i do love this color i'm going to add into it a little bit of venetian or indian red depending on which one you're using just little taps in here just for information little darks in there little passages that little taps between areas of light and dark but they add to the whole thing and that's all we're doing we're just building all this little bits of information in the back here
quite a big value change between the two areas. So what I will do in a moment, I think it's just going to come in with a bit more of the yellow in here. It's just going to make that a little darker through there. That does that quite nicely. I'm going to put a bit of red, bit of burnt sienna into that. I'm just going to run that along the bottom part where the boat is sitting on the mud. Just going to drop a little bit of indigo, almost neat. Just give that lovely dark line right on the mud there. Now we need to just come in with the final little bits and pieces. Use a little bit of sienna, a little bit of the uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna. Just going to come in and see if I can influence that light through there. Just to suggest the cells that are folded up on this vessel. Now not too strong a colour in here. So I'm just going to bring that down and this is just the reflections of what's up there. Now again, you can mess them about just as I did just now. Just play around with them or leave them as you feel. I quite like them sort of very understated. I'm just gonna come in here and just put a little bit more information into some of these. What I haven't done, and I will quickly do, just a little bit of a darker green in places on here. Just suggest some undulation, some little thickening of different plants that are on this bank here. Okay, so this is drying off fairly nicely and there are just one or two finishing touches I want to do. I certainly want to add in a little bit more ink into areas here along the riverbank, which I didn't go up far enough when the initial drawing was done. So I'm just going to put in one or two little taps like this just to complete the line through here. So that we've got lots of bits of information, lots of little scribbles.
and a little bit of violet out. Sort of quite a dark colour, but they've got a blueness about them. So I'm going to bring that in. A little weaker, but sort of bluer as it dries. It will just give you that darker glass effect. Put in a few bits of information like across the back here, a little bit of light on there. One of the ropes that are going up through there. just put in there to complete it all right now we are i think done okay everybody one picture of the oyster house in faversham creek finished i had a lot of fun doing it but i always say that but it's actually very true i really really do live for my painting and enjoy creating art as often as i possibly can and what excites me even more is being able to film it and create work that I hopefully you're going to enjoy, get something from and learn from to take on with your own work. Now for me that also means giving you all the warts as well. When something goes wrong I don't want to cut it out, I want to show you what I did, where I went wrong and how, if I possibly can, how I put it right. And tonight's video was no exception to that. I made a few fundamental errors, stupid errors, and also the heat of the evening has not helped. You can see by my face how hot it is tonight and so humid. We're in the middle of another heat wave and it didn't help when it come to the drying time of the papers. So I didn't actually calculate for that when I started the sky off, but we made a big error and I think I got out of it quite nicely. But that all said and done if you've enjoyed this then please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel i've noticed that only about half of those people that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel so if you enjoy it then please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything to do that but what you're actually doing is helping promote the video within uh, the algorithms of youtube and that means that a lot more people around the world get to see my videos thanks to your support and helping promote those videos to other people. So that would be awesome. And if you've got any comments and thoughts of stuff you'd like me to paint for the future, areas, you know, whether you like a lot of the sketching that I'm doing at the moment, yes, that's great, I enjoy that, but I want to make sure that I give everybody a rounded uh, sort of uh, proportion of painting videos. So if you like other stuff, please let me know. And only by letting me know can I sort of plan for the future and give you guys what you're looking for. So with that all said and done, don't forget there is that Patreon while you're over there. Take a look at it. If you want to get involved, you'll be so, so welcome. It doesn't cost you very much from as little as $3 a month. And there is no time period that you're uh, constrained to. You can opt in and out as you wish to. Now, with that all said and done, before I keep waffling on, and I'm liable to, I'm going to wish each and every one of you all the very best. And don't forget, nip out in your garden and find yourself a stick suitable or several of them, sharpen them up, and just enjoy the process of creating art, creating paintings. Have fun with it. That's what it's all about. Take care until the next time. All the best. Bye bye. Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting. Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I would like to do a little ink and wash with some. Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. To ch 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 channel. It's hot. That's the problem. 
oyster again. The oyster house that is located in Faversham Creek in Kent. Now, intro. Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Tonight I'm going to be doing for you, for you, no. and one more thing, we're not actually going to be using, let's start that day again so I didn't have the prop ready, where is it? <laughs> one more thing I didn't have with me, and one with all the warts as well. Yeah, if I get a drug in, uh, <laughs> let's start again then. Oh, that was going so well. Hi, everybody. One. <laughs> what is one? Certainly one. Picture of the Oyster House in Faversham Creek. 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 Start again then. Picture of the Oyster House in Faversham Creek. Creep. It's not a creep. It's a creek. I keep saying it. 